to worship on this sunny day. We're glad that you've chosen to be here with us. Uh, if you're visiting, we're so glad to have you. We just sang out of the 1982 hymnal, and it's marked with an H. Um, and then we also have Wonder, Love, and Praise. Um, and everything else you need to follow along with the service is in the leaflet. You can take the announcements out and set them aside. Now, at this time, it looks like Liam's going to lead the children to Sunday school. Are you ready? Okay, so children can follow the cross. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen.
with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to be seated for the readings. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And, and the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and crowd, cried out loud in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. First letter of Peter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. 
They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people. In order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. According to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me, because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than those, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything... I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
Grace, peace, and mercy are yours in the name of the risen God. For the past six years at All Saints, every Monday and Tuesday during the school year, something has been happening in the undercroft. And I know that just looking out, I can see many of you have been there, so you know what I'm talking about. Beginning, well, beginning in the morning with food deliveries, but then in the afternoon with cooking and setting snacks out. Then you can smell cookies, then you can smell cookies or something else baking. And then more foods in the oven getting ready. And then there's video games and board games and art supplies all brought into the undercraft right underneath us. And then more volunteers arrive. And by about 2.30, we are all prepared. We're prepared for the Teen After School Center. And this is our sixth year doing this, um, this outreach ministry. And so the teens come in and They've been in school all day, so we have enough food to cure their after-school appetites. And some of them pass through quickly and off to the next thing. And others stay a little bit longer and hang out. And we get to know them, and we get to hear their stories. This ministry began way back in 2011, and I wasn't here for it, but I, I hear about it quite often. All Saints was in a time of asking the community um, and discerning for ourselves, what, what can we do? What can we offer our community? And at one point, this led Pastor Kit and Father Andrew to a meeting at the library where they said, what can, what can we do to help? And they said, can you host the teens on Monday and Tuesday? <laughs> and so um, it all came together. Everything kind of came together. And it looks, it looks different every year, but this first year especially, um, you know, it looked a little different, but it all, it all happened. It all came together and happened. They brought food, like pizza or spaghetti. They brought games. People donated an air hockey table, a ping pong table. And I wasn't there in those early days, but I've witnessed the work that it takes to prepare for the teens. It's not just Monday and Tuesday afternoons. It's it's praying for them. It's thinking about how to make the space more welcoming for them. Um, it's about getting volunteers excited to, to be a part of this. Jesus says in our gospel for today, In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? Jesus is talking about going to be with God. And so we may picture it as Jesus going to heaven and being with God. And when we think about, okay, that's where we'll go to for eternity. But it's, it's more than that. It's more than eternal life. Um, eternal life and everlasting life starts here on earth, here where God is in the here and now. Because God is involved in our lives right now. And it's not just about Jesus preparing a place for us to go to one day. It's about God preparing places for us now. Places like All Saints or other communities that we've been a part of. Places like church camps, um, schools, all kinds of things. So it's not so much about this place that we'll get to go to one day. But it's about the kingdom of God right here, right now with all of God's people on earth. Because God's in relationship with, with us, giving us abundant life now, and, and asking to share that with others. And so for the past six years, one, one way that we've shared that is through the Teen After School Center. We've been opening our doors and our hearts to teenagers, and we've been blessed with so many wonderful volunteers. We've been blessed with support for the community, and even if you haven't been there, I bet you've, bet you've had a hand in it somehow. Maybe it was through just donating a craft supply 
or a prayer, things like that. Maybe it was you had a big party and you had too much food and you thought maybe Tass could use it. We can. Our teenagers have given a lot to us as well. And the volunteers, the volunteers know this. Those who have been around and have really gotten to know them. And we see them come and go. We see them kind of grow up before our eyes. They've shared friendship and they've um, invited us into their lives and, and trusted us, which is, which is no small thing. We've seen some kids who have just moved to the country and are learning English. And then a few weeks later, we hear they can, they can speak a few more words. And then a few months later, they're just talking like they've been speaking English their whole lives. And we get to see awesome things like this. We get to help them in, in some of the most vulnerable times in their lives. We get to tell them about ourselves, what makes us happy, what, what brings us joy, and we hear about what brings them joy. We hear about what makes them struggle. And we support and encourage them in, in their decisions, like going to school or, or taking all these AP classes or, or taking on new adventures. The Teen After School Center is a place where the teens come in between things, so they might come in between school and practice or a rehearsal. But I found over the years, and actually as, as I first was involved, that it's not just the teens that, that come in the in-between times, but it's the volunteers too. Because I actually came to help as a volunteer when I was waiting for a call. I was waiting for um, a place to be prepared for me where I could serve as a pastor. And so people come when, when they're in between jobs or in between um, retirement and needing to rest all day or, um, you know, they're retired but they're still young. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> we, have, we have wonderful volunteers, so I can't say that enough. And, um, you know, they've taught me a lot about... Um, how to, how to open up the hearts in, in this space. They've taught me to um, see that there's more than enough food. My Jean, there's more than enough food. We have plenty to give. It is true. As our library, our East Lansing Public Library has renovated from a very small teen space um, to a bigger uh, more fun room. Uh, we've noticed that the teens might not stay as, stay as long. Um, sometimes they just, they just pass through and get a snack. Um, but we've noticed a change in, in participation. And so we've prayerfully and um, thoughtfully made the decision that this is going to be our last year of the Teen After School Center, which is, is a little bit sad. I can hear... Um, you know, I can hear that in your reactions and when I tell people. It's a little bit sad, but um, it, it's exciting because now we're at this point where we can go to, we can go to the community and, say, community and say, what can we do to help? Where's some, where's some other space where our energy and resources are needed? Though our teens won't be um, coming here like they used to, I, I believe that we left a mark in their lives. We made an impression. Um, they know that the church is a safe, safe place for them. Um, they know it's a place where they're welcome, where they're given um, all that we can give them and more. Um, and, and they've learned about us in this process. And so All Saints is going into another time of wondering and asking God and asking our community, how can we help? Of course, first we're going to celebrate. Uh, we have to have a party. We had a party. We've had a party at the end of the year every year. So again, um, on Tuesday the 22nd, we're going to have the, the Fresh and Furious food truck. We're going to have games, we're going to have music and all that stuff because we need to celebrate um, the teens that have come through this place and all of the volunteers that have helped make this possible. We need to celebrate what we've done. Um, 
and then we'll, we'll bless this ministry as we, we look for, for other ways to serve God and serve our community. I've noticed this church, um, especially with, with the Teen After School Center, but in other ways I've noticed how our outreach, we, we go above and beyond. We look for more ways to help. At the Teen After School Center, we don't just offer a few snacks. We set out snacks, and then there's a meal, and then there's dessert, and then sometimes there's even like brownies or ice cream. We make sure that they have enough to eat. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Do you believe this, that, that those who believe in Jesus will do greater works than even Jesus could do? I always struggle with this, that we will do, are you sure? Are you sure? But if I look at, at task in, in the, the last six years, I think about all the meals that we've served. I think of all the people that have been fed. So yeah, there's the feeding of the 5,000, but we've had our own, our own versions of that when people just all came together at the beginning, but even now, when the food just comes in and then there's enough for everyone. I believe that we will do great things like Jesus. And I, and I believe that we'll do even greater. We don't always feel like what we're doing is significant, but it is. It's those everyday tasks that are so important. And one of the examples I can think of is, is like caring for a, an infant. You're changing several diapers a day, maybe several an hour. But that's important work. And that, that is meaningful work. Or maybe it's caring for friends and family members that, that aren't doing well. Your presence, you being there day after day, is significant. It's, it's hard, we don't want to brag about ourselves too much. But um, I have to brag about the volunteers and, um, and how much they've taught me about generosity and, and how much the teenagers have taught all of us. So it was a daily routine of getting groceries and putting the snacks out, but it was so much more than just doing this or the setup and cleanup. It's so much more of, than that. It's all the in-between. It's hearing new stories and, and learning new games and being humbled by the talent and, and the stories and the lives of young people that we've met. So God has prepared us for great things, all of us, as individuals and as members of this church. And God continues to go ahead into all the in unfamiliar places, into all the places that are unknown that we will encounter in our lives. And this will never end. Amen. Please join me in confessing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried.
These are the prayers of the people. In the space between petitions, please offer your prayers aloud or silently. Let us pray. Creating God, the rhythms of earth sing of your sustaining care and presence. Stir us to see the divinity of every being, to inhale the fragrance of you in all things, and to engage with you in redeeming creation. One body we, let us feast on the bread of belonging and drink from the cup of love. Most sacred I am, deepen our understanding of Jesus' prophetic words, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that we may do the greater things which were foretold. Remind us that our help and devotion are needed for turning the deserts to flowering places. We pray for Gail and Beth, who will be ordained on June 10th. Awaken in us, we pray, the Christ imprint on our soul, that our minds and imaginations may enlighten for the healing of this hurting world. Holy Spirit, rouse us to a daring and courageous hope. Summon in us the enduring joy of a people who know their belovedness and trust in a benevolent God. Strengthen us to follow Jesus, seeking and speaking always the truth, come what may. <laughs> Nudge us to choose the path of peacemaker, to listen, to forgive, to bless. Gentle us that by our very being we might reveal a glimpse of a more hallowed way. Glory to you, O God, for the guidance of the Spirit. By your saving grace, O God, our mistakes, our fears, our memories, our histories, our hurts hold no dominion over us. Open our hearts that we may release our burdens and surrender to the living waters of your transforming mercy. Glory to you, O God, for the promise of life. Receive our prayers for the suffering of the world and people in need, especially Howard Anderson, Marsha Ostrang, Luel Dingawan, Lynn Blocky, Nell Corkin, Jim Deering, Mary Fiedler, Tamara Hicks Siren, Catherine Hornbach, Oscar Hornbach, Ted Jensen, Marty Lippard, Emily Lynch, Barbara Mares Martello, Folu Ogundimu, Dixie Lee Premer, Kevin Reagan, Rosemary Severance, and Jean Tippett. We pray also for those who have entered eternal life, especially Chris Day, in whose loving memory the altar flowers are given by Ann Porter Day. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please greet one another in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, Jean.
Good morning. And happy Mother's Day, this beautiful day. So my name is Eric Hegg, and I'm the vestry person of the day. For those of you not familiar with the Episcopal Church, the vestry is the governing board of, um, of the church. If you have any questions about All Saints, please feel free to ask me. Everyone is invited to join us for a, a coffee hour today uh, after the service. Uh, please follow either set of stairs down or the elevator all the way to the bottom. And uh, please join us for fellowship and, and coffee following, following the service. Now, if you are visiting with us today, we ask you to please fill out a uh, visitor's card. This can be found in the pew rack in, in front of you. Please fill it out and place it in the offertory plate as it goes by. And this is the only offering we ask of you today, that you give us the opportunity to say thank you for uh, for, for, for visiting with us and to give us the opportunity to send you a bit of information about the, about the church. There are, of course, a number of important announcements, and I encourage you to read them all, but there are four in particular that uh, I'd like to point out to you. The first, today, the adult forum is a field trip. Uh, as part of the Greater Lansing Mighty Uke Day 7 uh, Festival, All Things Ukulele, uh, All Saints and St. Michael's Episcopal Church are joining uh, to host the Eucharist uh, worship service. This will be held today at noon at Micah Art Gallery in Old town. So uh, please join us, uh, bring a ukulele if you have one, and uh, feel free to play along. Uh, second, uh, on Tuesday, there will be uh, a, a viewing of the 13th. This is a powerful documentary about the mass incarceration and the uh, preschool to prison pipeline. It's co-sponsored both by All Saints and Action of Greater Lansing, and it's occurring at the Hannah Center at 7 p.m. So that's this Tuesday, and more details uh, can be found in the, in the bulletin. Please join us. Number three, uh, as many of you know, Kit will be going on sabbatical, and in fact, uh, next Sunday will be the last Sunday she will be with us until August, August 20th. And so we encourage you to come and pray her on her way uh, during the 10 a.m. service, as well as participate in a blessing uh, for the leaders who will be guiding all saints during her absence. And finally, the video team is looking for additional volunteers. So many of you know that every 10 a.m. service is, uh, is videotaped and then put on YouTube so that people who cannot join us, either because they are not well or they're out traveling, uh, can, can still uh, participate in the service uh, via, via the video. Uh, it's really easy to do. Um, the camera's right up there. You just turn it on before the service begins and you simply stop it at the end of the service. It's really simple, but it's important in ministry, and we. bottom line is we need a few more volunteers, especially with the summer coming up, people traveling, people graduating, and we are just in need of, of more volunteers. So if you're interested in helping out with this important ministry, please come and see me after, after the service. And that's all that I have. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Yes, Eric is the person to see if you like to push buttons, because that's all it is. You push the button. Um, it is birthday and anniversary Sunday, so who has a May birthday? Come on down. Come on down for the birthday prayers. May is a good month to be born. In fact, my niece Sarah, please pray for my niece. She was due with her eighth child three days ago. So I'm thinking Mother's Day might be the lucky day. Today, today I might get my new grandniece. Is it you guys' birthday? Oh, yeah. Yeah? How old are you now? Four or five? Uh, I think three, but we're going to turn four. You're going to turn four. Okay, I knew you guys were growing up fast. I'm the growing up very fast. I'm taller than Emmy. You are taller than Emmy. Yeah. <laughs> These things are important. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on these your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon them this day, this year, and always. Amen. Happy birthday. And are there any wedding anniversaries? Mm -hmm.
You're still here, but no John. Anybody else get married in May? The Bakers. The Coxes. Cox Pals. See, the May is a good month. May is a very good month. Cynthia. And then you guys can just stay up because these are two of our new members. Don and Stephen. Okay, are we all here? The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy anniversary. You guys can just stay up. <laughs> And now, it's always our delight this time of year to welcome new members to our congregation. So those of you who are planning to become members, come on down for your prayer of welcome. Come. There are some folks who are joining who couldn't be here this week. Cheryl, you coming? And the liturgy to welcome them is in your scripture insert on the back page because you all have a big part in this too <laughs> and where's Paulette who else who's not here today but who's joining us do you I'm trying to remember who else um, Katie yes Katie Katie the grad student yes she couldn't be here this week so we have Cheryl Lyons and her daughter, Mia. Mia, Charles Lewis, who many of you know from reading, and he's already reading in the service, and Kelly and Cynthia. And Cynthia, I saw in the book that you led morning prayer on Thursday. So everybody's already getting included in the life of the church. Please be sure you get to know them um, at coffee hour and welcome them. And now, uh, please join me in the celebration to welcome new members. With open hearts and warm spirits, we welcome each of you today into our All Saints family. We greet the Christ within you. We greet you as the presence of Christ in our midst. Come in out of the dark into the light of Christ's presence among us here who gather in his name. Come in out of the cold into the warmth of Christ's embrace. Come saint and sinner, come seeker and sought. Come with your questions, your burdens, your gifts and gratitude. Come with all that you are and all that you are not. Come with all that you hope to be. All are welcome to come into the light of Christ, to be the light of Christ in the world. No matter who you are or from whence you come, no matter how long or far you have journeyed, welcome, 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 you are welcome. Together let us pray for our new members. Lord Jesus, you welcomed all who came to you and taught us that in welcoming even the least of our sisters and brothers, it is you we welcome into our hearts. Bless now those gathered here in your name, that we may look upon your countenance in the faces both familiar and new. And make us to know, Lord, that in your body there can be no strangers among us, only friends whom we have not yet met. Amen. Join me in welcoming these new saints. You are welcome into the fellowship of all saints. Come and be fed, seek and love God, serve each person as Christ. Welcome. Now they don't go away. We have gifts. Everybody gets a gift. Thank you and bless you. So get to know our new friends here. And now I have one more task to do before we move on to the Eucharist. As you know from the prayers, um, Beth Bingham and Gail Crane have finished their studies. They're going to be ordained to the transitional diaconate in June and then to the priesthood in December. And as our gift from the parish to them, I asked Dottie Hoopengarner if she would use her magic and make stoles for their ordination. So we have two 
beautiful Dottie made stoles, one for Beth and one for Gail. And I'm going to Beth's seminary graduation this week in Virginia, and Gail will be with us next week for the EFM celebration and graduation. So I will give Beth hers on Thursday, and we will get to give Gail hers on Sunday, but I thought you all could help me in blessing these gifts from their original community of faith as they go out into the wider church. So I would ask all of you to raise your hands over these stoles, like that, and let us pray. O oh God, you revealed your Son clothed in majesty and glory. Accept these stoles for the use of the clergy of your church, that being clothed with humility as they minister to you, they may show forth your eternal splendor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, and I will tell them that you all blessed them. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
we continue with the Eucharistic prayer printed in your leaflet. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
body and blood of Christ. Thank you.
please stand and join me in sending forth our Eucharistic visitors. Pam and Terry, in the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body because we all share one bread and one cup. And the post-communion prayer is found on the last panel of your leaflet. Together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have too much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And may the blessing of the one who made us and who loves us and walks with us be with you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit this day and always. Amen.